Senator, uh, Congressman Lofgren talked about not adopt this bill. Thank you. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself a minute to respond to uh, both gentlemen from California. First, with regard to uh, Mr. Becerra, the fact of the matter is that Title VIII of the United States Code, Section 1373, related to communication between government agencies and Immigration and Naturalization Service, is an important statute and sanctuary cities violate that statute when they pass ordinances that prohibit, prohibit their law enforcement officers from communicating with the Immigration and Naturalization Service. This yields situations like what occurred in San Francisco because the sheriff there had a policy saying they could not communicate with the INS. And already one San Francisco supervisor has called upon the city to change the policy so that they will communicate. This bill, which cuts off funds to cities that have provisions that contradict and violate the United States law, does the same thing by a different route. And it will save many lives in the future if local law enforcement will communicate with the INS. Now, to the gentleman uh, from California, Mr. Farr, I, I just want to repeat again what I've said several times here. There's nothing in this bill that requires... time has expired. I give myself an additional 15 seconds. There's nothing in this bill that requires any officer to ask any question of any victims of crimes about their immigration status or uh, to reveal that information to the INS. So uh, I would urge folks to look at what this bill, very straightforward, simple bill, says federal law governs immigration policy and local government shouldn't have 50, uh, hundreds of different immigration policies the of their time own. Has expired. At this time, to close. Uh, the has, gentleman yields back. The gentlewoman from California is recognized for 15 seconds. Is do we have 15 seconds left? Is that correct? We have 15 seconds left. I, I would just close by saying that we have been asked by law enforcement agencies, by domestic violence advocacy groups, by the faith community, not to adopt this bill. I know we can come together to make a safer community. This bill is not the answer, and I urge members to vote no. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, may I ask how much time is remaining? The gentleman, gentleman has six and one quarter minutes remaining. At this time, it's my pleasure to yield the balance of our time to the gentleman from South Carolina, the chairman of the Immigration and Border Security Subcommittee, Mr. Gowdy, to close our debate. The gentleman from South Carolina is recognized to close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank Chairman Goodlatte for his leadership on this and so many other issues of significance on the Judiciary Committee, his steady hand and brilliant legal mind uh, are without equal on our committee. Mr. Speaker, I also want to thank the family of Kate Steinle for the grace that they have shown uh, during this time of unspeakable grief. Bearing a child, Mr. Speaker, is what each of us who has ever been called mom or dad fears the most. After Trayvon Martin was killed, the president said that could have been my son, Mr. Speaker. And when I see a picture of a beautiful Kate Steinle smiling, that could have been any of our daughters. And it still can be because what happened to her, Mr. Speaker, can and will happen again if we do not get serious about enforcing the law, Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, Mr. Speaker, had a quarter century's worth of lawlessness. Dating back to 1991, he committed local, state, and federal crimes. He was in five separate states, I hasten to add, Mr. Speaker, who supported five times, and each time had so little regard for the law of this country that he reordered, he reentered that border that we are supposed to have functional control over. His procedural history, Mr. Speaker, is every bit as disturbing in May of 2011. This defendant was convicted and sentenced to 46 months imprisonment for illegal reentry again. 
At the conclusion of that sentence, he was released from the Bureau of Prisons to a known sanctuary jurisdiction for the ostensible prosecution of an old drug case. Now, of course, Mr. Speaker, San Francisco did not prosecute that old drug case. They dismissed it, which surprises exactly no one. And then they released this defendant. They did not return him to the Bureau of Prisons. They did not return him to federal probation. They did not honor the detainer that had been placed by ICE. They released him, who was not supposed to be in the country in the first place, with this horrific criminal history. They released him so he would be free to walk around and shoot someone's daughter, which is exactly what he did. And Mr. Speaker, we are given a litany of excuses. I've, I've heard them this morning, Mr. Speaker, for policies like this. We're told that we need policies like the one in San Francisco so people will cooperate with law enforcement. I want you, Mr. Speaker, to consider just how utterly illogical that comment is. We need to release known criminals back into society so society will help us catch known criminals. How absurd is that? That we're going to release people that should be deported, that are recidivist felons, so other people will help, you, help us catch those who should be deported and are recidivist felons. For almost five years, Mr. Speaker, I have worked alongside Chairman Goodlatte, and I have heard a litany of phrases with almost catatonic frequency as if repeating something enough will make it true. Phrases, Mr. Speaker, like functional control over the border, but I've yet to hear how somebody can re-enter five times if you have functional control over the border. I've heard we need citizenship for 11 million undocumented aspiring Americans, as if 11 million of any category can pass a background check. I've heard arguments against empowering state and local law enforcement to assist in the enforcement of our immigration laws, Mr. Chairman. Now stop and think, we trust them to do murder cases, sex assault cases, kidnapping cases, narcotics trafficking. You even trust them to provide security, Mr. Speaker, at their own functions back in the district. But when it comes to immigration law, oh no. No, sir, we don't trust you to enforce immigration law. Everything else, including our own security, both here in Washington and back in the district. But God forbid we trust state and local cops to help us with immigration law. The president says we need immigration reform. So folks will, to use his words, Mr. Chairman, come forward, get on the books, get right with the law. And I want you to ask yourself, what in Mr. Lopez Sanchez's background makes you think he would ever come forward. And why in the hell does he need to be on the books? He's in the Bureau of Prison. You don't need him on the books. He's in the Bureau of Prisons. And you had him. And you let him go. Which brings me to my favorite phrase, Mr. Speaker. Sanctuary cities. It has almost a utopian sound to it, doesn't it? Well, as the speaker knows, the definition of sanctuary is a place of refuge or safety. And my question for folks in San Francisco and my colleagues who support this policy is a refuge for whom? A sanctuary for whom? A refuge for Kate Steinle? A sanctuary for Kate Steinle? or a refuge for a convicted felon with a 25-year-long criminal history. So the phrase sounds benign, but it was no sanctuary for her. It may have been for him, but it sure as hell wasn't for her. Mr. Speaker, my message to San Francisco would be simple. You won't honor our detainers, we won't honor your warrants. If detainers are too much trouble for you to handle, perhaps federal money will be too much trouble for you to handle, too. If you can't honor our detainers, you're not going to get any more money. The gentleman's time has expired. All Thank time you, for debate has expired. Pursuant to House Rule 370, the previous question is ordered on the bill. The question is on engrossment and third reading of the bill. Those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. The ayes have it. Third reading. 
a bill to amend Section 241I of the Immigration and Nationality Act to deny assistance under such section to a state or political subdivision of a state that prohibits its officials from taking certain actions with respect to... So who's going to cover? They're going to cover Bernie? Hey, they're going to cover, like, Sleepy Joe Biden? They're going to cover Pocahontas, who was... Think of it. Think of it. She of the great tribal heritage. What tribe is it? Uh, let me think about that one. <laughs> Meantime, she's based her life on being a minority. Pocahontas, they always want me to apologize for saying it. And I hereby, oh no, I want to apologize, I'll use tonight. Pocahontas, I apologize to you. I apologize. To you, I apologize. To the, to the fake Pocahontas, I won't apologize. No, it's causing her problems. You know, that name's good. Because now even the liberals are saying, take a test. Take a test. You know, the, I tell you, I, I shouldn't tell you because I like not to give away secrets. But this one, let's say I'm debating Pocahontas, right? I promise you I'll do this. I will take, you know those little kits they sell on television for $2? Learn your heritage. Guy says, I was born in Scotland. It turns out he was born in Puerto Rico. And that's okay. It's good. You know, guy says, I was born in Germany. Well, he wasn't born in Germany. He was born someplace else. I'm going to get one of those little kids. And in the middle of the debate, when she proclaims that she's of Indian heritage, because her mother said she has high cheekbones. That's her only evidence, that her mother said she had high cheekbones. We will take that little kit and say, but we have to do it gently because we're in the Me Too generation, so we have to be very gentle. <laughs> and we will very gently take that kit and we will slowly toss it, hoping it doesn't hit her and injure her arm, even though it only weighs probably two ounces. And we will say, I will give you a million dollars to your favorite charity, paid for by Trump, if you take the test and it shows you're an Indian, you know. And let's see what she does, right? I have a feeling she will say no. But we'll hold that for the debates. Do me a favor, keep it within this room. Because I don't want to give away any secrets. And the press is very honorable. They won't. Please don't tell her what I just said. 